welcome to ECHO. My name is Keely Smith and I'm the Public Programs Manager here at ECHO. Uh, we are so excited. We've had a long-standing partnership with the University of Vermont Physics Department. And today they're talking about a very fascinating aspect of physics, structural color. So you may remember our butterfly exhibit if you were here for that, where we had live blue morphos. And today you have a chance to learn about why exactly they are blue. Uh, we're also going to be talking about some other organisms and really interesting concepts. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to welcome Randy Hendrick from the University of Vermont Physics Department, who will be talking today. And after we're done, please check out the rest of our uh, hands-on activities. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so I'm going to uh, tell you some things about structural color. Uh, Everything that I'm going to tell you is, is also explained in more detail in the tables. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I can answer questions too if, uh, if, if, uh, if something comes to your mind uh, either during or, or at the end of the presentation. Uh, so uh, structural color is often found in nature. You can see an example here. It's a, it's a hummingbird. Um, but there are many uh, other ways to see structural color. Some of them are less glamorous, such as a patch of oil. If your car leaks oil onto your driveway, if the driveway is wet, you'll get um, oil on top of water, and oil spreads out into a very thin layer. And then what happens is sunlight will be split up into, into colors. <clears throat> so if the, if the light comes in, some of the light is reflected from the top of the oil, and some of the light is reflected from the water underneath. And depending on that, on how those two reflections combine, uh, it will select a certain color. So I'm going to try to explain in, in, uh, in a, few, uh, a few slides how that works. Okay, so one thing to know is what I just said, uh, which is that white light is made up of colors. So you can see, starting from the bottom, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These are also the colors of the rainbow. Uh, the, uh, uh, the rainbow could also be considered to be a structural color in the sense that after a rainstorm, tiny water droplets are s still suspended, hanging in the air, and they can reflect the, uh, the light in a certain way which also splits up the color. You may notice that we represent different colors uh, as a wave. And each color has a different wavelength. So this is how uh, we think about what is different about different colors so that you can, uh, that you, so that you can select a different color. Um, now, the wavelength of light is not as big as what I showed there. In fact, if you take one of your hairs, uh, this is a hair uh, uh, under a microscope, much bigger. The wavelength of light would be something like that tiny particle. So if you feel, you can feel the width of one of your hairs and, and uh, feel how small that is. But that's that big, and then the wavelength of light is uh, about 100 times smaller than that. It's not uh, super, super tiny. It's not like atoms, but it's pretty small. Uh, so we talk about the wavelength as being from one wave crest to the next wave crest. It's called the wavelength, and that has a certain length. You can see again here, uh, starting from the top, the red has a certain wavelength in units of nanometers. The green, a little bit smaller, and the violet is a little bit smaller. Uh, one way to, to uh, see structural color is with soap bubble films. We have a nice demonstration of this at uh, uh, the far table in the corner. And um, it's interesting how you can see the colors of the rainbow repeating over and over again. But something different happens at the top. Um, so what do you see at the top? Anybody? It's dark, right? So 
Um, so something happened there. Actually, the, the soap film is still there. It's just that it's it's so thin, it's smaller than the, than the wavelength of light. And what happens is that because of, uh, because the, the, the soap bubble is pulled down by gravity, uh, it will be start to get thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. So in this photo, it's still there at the top. It's just thinner than that wavelength of light that I talked about. Um, you can work the other way. If you look at the color, you can work backwards to, uh, to the thickness of the soap bubble film. So you can see when you get close to zero, it gets dark. Uh, but as it gets thicker and thicker, the colors repeat. So you can see, again, the colors of the rainbow. When it gets really thick, it, uh, it gets a little bit uh, muddy or, or, or something. So you can work backwards uh, from the color of the soap film. You can also tell the thickness. Um, so the way that the color is actually selected is this effect known as constructive interference. So remember I told you for the oil, for the oil patch, the uh, two uh, rays of light coming from the top and the bottom have to uh, combine back together. If they combine in this way so that the peaks and, and the valleys are both lined up, we call that constructive interference, and it adds to an even brighter color. But if they're lined up uh, so that the peak of one wave and the valley of another wave are lined up, then that's called destructive, and it, it doesn't uh, reflect at all in that case. The, the two waves cancel each other. They can cancel each other perfectly so that no light of that particular co uh, color can come out. So these effects are called constructive and destructive interference. Going back to the soap film, we can, uh, we can see the same thing here. The light comes in from the sun uh, or from some other light source like uh, the room lights. Uh, there's reflection from the top of the soap film and then another reflection from the back. And then those two rays combine together. The, uh, and, and then uh, only one color will then have, uh, uh, have constructive interference and then, uh, and then you'll see that color depending on what the thickness is. Now the other effect is this thing called the phase change, which I'd like to, to demonstrate. Uh, I, have to, I have to go for this one because I can't see the cursor, I have to go to the... Uh, Here, okay. So to see the phase change, this is a rope, uh, and it's tied with a clamp at one end. And then, uh, if I if I jiggle it at one end, you can uh, you can see the wave go across. So I'm, with, well, I'm we have one of these in real life at the uh, at one of the tables. But if I jiggle it, you can see the the, uh, the wave pulse goes across, and then it uh, it it goes uh, into negative. It gets inverted. So this is the, the phase change effect you can see. Whenever the uh, and I'm going to turn off the damping. Whenever the rope hits, whenever the the pulse hits the, the clamp, it inverts. And then with the damping turned off, it will just go back and forth like that forever. I can also <clears throat> I can also switch to a loose end. And now it doesn't invert. So this is telling you something about <clears throat> how the reflection from the top and the bottom of the of the soap film are different. One of them inverts the wave and the other one doesn't. I can also make another pulse and then you can see the, uh, the constructive interference as those two pulses come together. And then uh, on the other side, when they're opposite, then they actually cancel each other. 
and then you can do crazy stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I encourage everyone to try that on the uh, on the real life rope that we have over at the table. Okay, and then uh, so then how does that uh, how does that happen uh, in uh, in things like uh, hummingbirds and peacock feathers? So what happens is. This is a bit, uh, a bit of a simplification, but the basic idea is that the peacock feather has ridges, which is the green area, and the reflection from the lower part of the, uh, the, uh, the peacock feather and the upper part of the ridge uh, combine together to, uh, to um, so you see here the, uh, the wave crest of the dotted line and the wave crest of the solid line are uh, peaking together, and so that's constructive interference for green. And then for blue, you see the wave crest of the dotted line and the wave valley of, of the solid line are together, so that's destructive. And then also for red, it's destructive interference. Um, so this is what gives, um, in the case of the blue morpho butterfly, the blue color. Uh, there's similar effects for man-made things like a, a DVD disc, soap bubble film also has this kind of effect. And if you, uh, one of the interesting phenomena is if you look at it from different angles, the color can change, or if you change the angle of the light, the color can change. And that uh, that effect has a name. It's called iridescence. So all of these different uh, things uh, uh, show this iridescence effect. Uh, also, the, uh, the surface doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It doesn't have to be mirror smooth. If you have a, uh, a rough surface, it will also give the same kind of uh, uh, reflection. But you see here, the eye that's not looking at the reflection here doesn't see anything. Uh, but here, <coughs> the rough surface, the eye that's not looking at the reflection still sees something. And that effect is called diffuse scattering. Uh, most things around us are not perfectly smooth, and so we, re we rely on this diffuse scattering to see mo most things around us. Okay. Now there are also examples of things that are not structural color. Uh, one example that I like is the, uh, the indigo dye. Um, a pair of blue jeans has two to three grams, roughly, of indigo dye in it. Uh, so this is not structural color. The blue is actually a property of the molecule, this 2, 2 prime, this 2, 3 dihydroxo 3 oxindolindin. <laughs> um, um, so that's not structural color. It, it's, a, it's actually a, a dye. Uh, so then the question is, is eye color uh, an example? So I know some of you have already visited the table. Uh, how many of you think that uh, eye color is an example of structural color? Okay. Some? How many think that it's not? Okay. And some of them are, some of you are neutral. <laughs> um, it turns out that it depends. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll explain what it depends on. So uh, before, before I mention that, one thing I want to mention is in nature, you can also find non-iridescent structural colors. And we think we understand something about how that works. For example, the, uh, a macaw, which is a kind of bird, the feathers, uh, you know, feathers have, uh, have uh, barbs. And if you uh, do a cross-section and look inside of those, you see the spongy, um, this, this, uh, spongy structure, which has a size that is on the wavelength of, of light. And so it is believed that the, for example, the blue in the macaw, in the macaw feather bars uh, is produced by this spongy beta carotene. Uh, another example is the blue crown mannequin, which is uh, also a non-iridescent structural color. So, uh, so eye color, if you have uh, blue eyes, the blue eyes do not have any significant pigment in them. 
And so the, the, the color from blue or even green eyes actually comes from scattering of the light, not from the pigment. And so you can see the iris is divided into the stroma and epithelium. The epithelium is a dark color. And so uh, you'll see several examples over there where if we put something dark behind uh, 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 something, it, it actually affects the color. So for blue eye, you have something dark but with a scatterer in front of it, similar to the spongy, it has a structure similar to the spongy structure that I just showed you. So for blue eyes, we think that that is a type of a structural color. Um, if you have brown eyes, the brown eye, the brown actually comes from melanin, so that would be uh, a pigment. So eye color, it depends. It can be structural color or it can be a pigment. Okay, and so the basic, uh, the basic message here, just to recap, white light is made up of colors, and then uh, the structure can select colors to give you structural color. And uh, that's all I have. Structural color is awesome. <laughs> carbon black to the polystyrene spheres. So if we add, uh, if we take our polystyrene, I just happen to have this right here. If we take our polystyrene spheres, which in liquid form it, had, it looks like milk, and we add just a little tiny bit of, of black stuff, this is, this is carbon, just for our mock-up, uh, that will change the color. So some of the slides that we made actually have more of a greenish like cast in it. Anything else? Okay, thank you.